Hi there, I hope you're well. In this video, I'll be taking a very quick look at the Atomstack V5 entry-level laser and engraver. But before we do that, well, we need to go back to when it first arrived. So the Atomstack is an exclusive brand from Banggood. And I first saw this 30 watt model in a video from Dennis at his Hooked on Wood channel. I paid a little under £250 for this, including shipping, and it arrived by courier around a couple of weeks after I ordered it. This is only the second item I've ever bought from Banggood, and the whole process was completely painless and very, very thorough. The laser arrived very well packaged with an excellent instruction manual and the whole assembly took about an hour and a half. Bear in mind that that's stopping to shoot video of the process as well. That's very fast and easy with each step clearly marked and the components for each step bagged separately. The frame is simply bolted together, loosely at first, then tightened up against a known square. And the gantry or X assembly comes ready assembled and simply slides onto the V-slot extrusion. and the bottom wheel has an eccentric nut on it for adjustment. It was quite loose out of the box for easy assembly, and it simply needs snugging up onto the rail. The power supply and control unit forms the left rear leg of the frame, and the others simply bolt on. The extrusion is already tapped to accept the bolts. Drive belts next, and again the instructions are very clear. You may need something to help you feed the toothed belt through the extrusion, and it's simply pulled tight and fixed into place. Now belt tension is quite important. If you get it too tight, you run the risk of uh, overworking the little stepper motors, for example. So I use the pre-assembled cross gantry here as a guide to get the tension, then I could set it lock the belt down and trim off the excess and fit the end caps. Now, you're supposed to do this at both ends, but I've left the back end long just in case I need to adjust it later on. It doesn't look quite so tidy, but to be honest, I can live with that if it means I can do something later that I need to. So with the belt secured and everything running smoothly, it's time to fit the laser. You need to drop the Z carriage down to fit the countersunk screws that hold the laser in place. and then lift it up again to fit the protective shield around the laser head. Don't be tempted to skip this step. The laser is very bright, bright enough to burn, remember, and you really don't want to be looking directly at it. With the mechanical stuff complete, we can fit the wiring loom. This already comes connected to the power supply, and the three connectors, one to each stepper motor, or one to the laser, will only fit one way. And that's kind of where the manual runs out, to be honest. You can plug it in and power it up, make sure that the fan spins and the light's on. But in order to do anything with it, you need to connect it to a computer, like any printer. Now, I'm on the Mac side of things, so my choice is restricted. If you're a Windows user, you have many other options, and some of those are free. I'm using software called Lightburn, which is a very reasonable $40, I think, and there's a 30-day completely unrestricted trial period, which is what I'm on now. Uh, one of the little bits of weirdness from my point of view is that the software won't run unless it's actually connected to a laser, so you can't download it and try out the drawing capabilities or anything like that. But there are excellent video tutorials and a manual, certainly enough to get me started. And even though this is all new to me, following the instructions, my laser was recognised straight away as a gerbil, GRBL, Gribble device. They've chatted together and I have the work area for my laser set as the defaults in the device settings. It's as simple as that. No drivers to install or anything like that. 
The software itself is broadly familiar to anyone who's ever used a drawing package on a computer, albeit with some inevitable differences in the keyboard shortcuts and that kind of thing. I'm just going to burn a small logo into a piece of birch ply as my first test, and while that happens, let me tell you why I'm interested in this machine and what I think I might use it for. Now I sell these square enough clamping guides through my Etsy, and as a consequence I do a lot of branding. I like the physicality of hand branding, I like the uniqueness of a hot metal brand, but sometimes, especially with these smaller brands that I have on these small squares, these small guides, they're actually quite hard to apply evenly, and I thought that if I maybe ganged up a batch of ten or so squares, I could leave the laser to deal with that type of thing. Now let's be clear, I'm not expecting something like this to be a production tool. It almost certainly won't be fast enough for that. But for something that I can set up and leave to run, not unattended, but in the other room for 20 minutes or half an hour, then it may well do the job. But that, I think, is my first ever laser brand. It's not bad. It's a little bit pale. Um, branding is always a juggling act between heat, pressure and time. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video about branding with like a hot iron. But with this I'll probably need to slow the laser down a little bit, increase the power a little bit, or maybe make more than one pass just to build up that intensity. Now fairly obviously I am at the very, very early stages of this journey. And as I said at the start of the video I think there'll be more to come with this as I get further into it. And I've got a couple of questions actually that I haven't quite found answers to yet. So I've got to be honest, I thought I'd take the easy option and ask Dennis from the Hooked on Wood channel. And I'm delighted to say that Dennis is going to join us now, assuming I can get the, the tech to work. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Hi Dennis. Hi Peter. Welcome to the 10 Minute Workshop, live from London. Well, not, not quite live, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's so nice to see you, because although I'm also a content creator, this is the first time I'm actually speaking to another. And we all search on YouTube, and you are one of the persons that made me change colors from uh, Makita to Festool. Oh, well, I'm, I'm honored, Dennis, but as for the Festool, I'll take responsibility for the first one, but the others, they're all on you. <laughs> So you're a little further along with your laser journey than I am. We'll get to my questions in a minute, but maybe for the folks who don't know you, Dennis, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel? Well, I'm uh, Dennis and my channel is uh, Hooked on Wood. And different than you, I always did woodworking as a hobby. Uh, I think for about 10 years now, but the last three years more on a daily basis. And I always had ideas to improve my workshop, but I never found the time. So when that time came, I decided to make uh, the best of my workshop and implement all the ideas I had over the first seven years. So I made a clever insert to improve dust extraction, but I also found a very nice and secure way to add a router fence on my workbench and much more. And another item is my China tool series where I do in-depth reviews uh, of tools from China. And I believe that is how you find me. Yes, uh, great channel. I'd seen your workbench build before as well, but it's the China Tools series that's been really interesting and how I found this laser. I think all the China Tools are from Banggood, I think you said. This is the only second thing I've ever bought from there, and I've been very impressed. Obviously, they're priced very competitively, so you don't get all the bells and whistles on it. For example, on this laser, you don't get the, the limit stops, the limit switches, which means that using the software that comes with it, the laser won't home, it doesn't automatically return to the start point. And that's important because that's where everything's referenced from. So my question for you, question number one is, how have you worked around that? Or do you have to jog the laser into position manually on each job? Yes, you are right. But this is not a problem, at least not with Lightburn that I use. Yeah, I'm on Lightburn as well, that's, that's handy. And I knew you would ask me something about that, so I did some uh, preparations to explain it better. You have to place the laser in the start position manually. But when you have done that, the laser will automatically go to the position after engraving. But you can also always go back to a point zero with the start position button. Not the home button, but the start position button. And you just have to make sure you set the starting point to absolute coordinates. Ah, goodness. I hadn't even considered that you could use, move this manually. I'm used to, a, I'm a, I've got a little CNC machine with that screwdriver and obviously when the power's off that's locked up solid. That makes 
perfect sense. I hadn't actually thought of that at all. And the start position in the software instead of the home button. That's a that's a huge, huge help. Thank you. Uh, next question then was about the, the smoke fume extraction. Obviously, it's a laser that's making its mark by burning the wood. And I am slightly paranoid about smoke in a small enclosed workspace like mine. Mine's a commercial space with lots of other units in the building and all the smoke alarms are connected. So I don't want to set off <laughs> smoke alarms in the whole building. So I'm going to be making some kind of fume extractor, but I'm not sure if it needs a hood that covers the whole thing or whether a hose that can follow the laser head would be better. I know you mentioned uh, extraction in your video, Dennis, without giving the game away too much. Can you tell me if you've put anything in place for yours yet? And do you have any general tips for, for safety? Yes, what I learned so far is that these lasers can be uh, very dangerous, so you have to take some care. First with the laser itself, you need uh, to wear glasses, even if there's already a protection uh, on the laser itself. And the other thing is the, the smoke, that can be uh, toxic if you engrave MDF for example. So I definitely put it in a closed box with a small fan and a small pipe uh, outside. I think that is the safest way. And I also want to make the box so that I do not have a direct view of the laser from eye level. But I still have to start, so for now I hit the play button and run outside. <laughs> like an extra, it's best not to be in the room when it's happening, that makes perfect sense. And I'm guessing there'll be a video about that? Definitely. Yeah, I think a lot will depend on the length of the hose run as well as the strength of the fan. So there's plenty of experimentation to be done, I think. Uh, I'm certainly going to cite mine somewhere else. Uh, generally speaking though, Dennis, how are you finding the laser so far? Have you found any new uses for it? Well, when you make a closed box and some small holes at the front, I do not think you need a big fan, just a small fan. You only have to create a bit of under pressure in the box. And further, I'm also still learning. Uh, but yesterday I discovered I could also cut some uh, stickers. So that is, uh, that is very nice. All right, that's really interesting, Dennis. Thank you. Uh, we need to do a sticker swap, don't we? Um, I'm sure I've taken up enough of your time today. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks so much for your help. Uh, before you go, remind everybody where they can find you. You're hooked on wood here on YouTube, of course. But what about all those social things? Yes, on Instagram, I am d.hookedonwood. And on my website, www.hookedonwood.online, you can find free plans of my workbench and a ranking of all the China tools are tested and a lot more, of course. That's absolutely brilliant, Dennis. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me today. I think we might be chatting again in future, but for now, thanks again and have a great day. Nice to meet you too, Peter, and uh, we keep in touch. And end, end, there we go. Uh, what a nice guy Dennis is. Um, very generous with his time too. And that was really helpful. I know some folks sort of sneer at the idea of YouTube or maker communities, but I've never met anybody in the business who hasn't been very genuine and really happy to help. So I think that's the basics done for this one. Um, there's still obviously a little bit more construction type stuff to do. I've got to lock the laser in place. I'm going to raise the, the board up as well, the baseboard. Dennis mentioned this as well in his video that the, the, the uppy downy, the Z axis is almost, almost at its limit when you're running an 18mm board in there and it doesn't need to be that low down. It could easily be up here somewhere. So it just makes sure that there's definitely no flex in that axis. Um, but other than that, bit of basic construction, get a box built around it, an enclosure with a fan in it to get the smoke or fumes away. I don't know what that's going to do for heat buildup. Might have to think about that. Uh, but we'll cross that one when we come to it. Uh, but that's it, I think, for this one. Thanks uh, so much for taking a look. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting to Dennis, so do go and have a look at his uh, YouTube and his Instagram. While my Patreon and member credits run, I'll run a little bit more laser action for you. But that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.